We're very old, but we still hope to go there one day to join our daughter. There is the promised land of Israel, a dream for many here in the secluded valleys of West Bengal, where India meets Bangladesh and Burma. This is the untold story of the Kuki, one of the lost tribes of Israel, lost in time and space for more than 27 centuries, who have ended up here in the Indian state of Manipur. When we started coming up the hills on the plains, that's where Kuki area begins. All the way to Barmaos, it's a gang division, Chin Hills. We undertook a clandestine trip to this remote region of India, one of the poorest in the country and beset by multiple insurgencies. The people that we came to find in these remote mountains are guerrillas from the Kuki Freedom Fighters movement. For many years, they've been fighting for independence from the central government in New Delhi. Although some have been Christianized, the Star of David is still on their flag. Indeed, references to their ancestral Judaism are to be found everywhere, as is the claim of deep ties with the state of Israel. The Manasseh, they have this uh, uh, warrior character quite highlighted in them. A lot of the uh, cookies who've been uh, gone to Israel are, are in the front line, and a good number of them are the sharpshooters. So this is another confirmation that we are indeed the descendants of Manasseh. It's normal that we go to fight in Israel. It's a duty to defend the country of our origins. Here is Churchanpur district synagogue in the foothills of the Himalayas. The Kuki not only have their guerrilla force, they also have their places of worship. They are free to practice their Jewish faith in this overwhelmingly Hindu nation. Until the early year 2000s, we had to hide. We did not have the right to pray together. Now we have our synagogues. This is the township of Vengom, known as the Colony of Happiness. It's the Jewish quarter of Charachanpur. In recent years, contacts with Israeli religious organizations dedicated to the search for the diaspora have created a new trend. The Aliyah of the Kuki, the immigration of this ethnic group of Southeast Asian Jews to the land of Israel. Even though we are in India, uh, the, our forefathers are coming from uh, the land of uh, God, which is called Zion. Some days um, I will reach my uh, dreamland. Some days I'm, I will be there. Benny, the Cookie community's most famous singer, plans to leave his past life behind him. Like many here, he's about to leave for the promised land. He has sold his house as he prepares to depart with his family on a one-way trip, a final journey to the heart of the Middle East. I want to move from this country very soon. Uh, I'm glad. <laughs> we are happy to we go. We are happy to go um, to our promised land. This is not our land. <laughs> we are just a guest, Indian guest. <laughs> we think it's like a guest. Tens of thousands of cookies live in India, but many are already in Israel in heart and mind. 
The head of the insurgency has even sent an official request to the head of government in Jerusalem, Benjamin Netanyahu. I'm sending it to him because I want to make him known that we are his people. And not only the Kuki people, all these almost 20 countries are Manasseh people, Israel people. He being the prime minister of Israel, we are still Israel. Manasseh is one of Israel, so he should have more interest. Hello, how are you? Do you hear me? What's the weather there? It's good today. As for Shabbat, it should be 28 degrees. It's great. Then his niece has already moved to Israel, where she's built a new life. The phone is their only link now. He has no guarantee, but he hopes to leave India this year to finally land in Tel Aviv airport, as he says in his song, and become a citizen of the Jewish homeland. How do you feel when you see this flag? I feel happy and proud. All these places are Arab's place. Samira is Ben's niece. Like many newcomers, she lives at the forefront of the Israeli settlements in Kiryat Arba. It's right next to the Palestinian city of Hebron, a very tense area in the heart of the West Bank. Before three months, it was here, right over here, and it was a bad, and the security guard was a woman, a girl, and one Arab girl come and tried to step her, and uh, uh, the Magab girl just killed her instantly on the spot. Six families live in my building. My neighbors, this is also from India, and my opposite is also from India, and the lowest is also from India. Her apartment directly overlooks the huge fence separating Israelis and Palestinians. It's a far cry from her native Manipur. Everything is from... But Zamira has made new friends here and planted a garden which reminds her of her old home. It's evident, it's evident from everything that we miss it, but uh, I can't leave Israel. The last time I went to Manipur, I missed them a lot. I went there, but my heart, my soul, my nesama was not uh, relaxed. Uh, I feel like uh, a foreigner going to there already. I, I'm an Sayak. I'm not, I didn't fit there any, anymore. Traditionally, the Kuki are fierce fighters, and many have joined the Israeli army or work for the security services. Yosef arrived with his parents when he was six. He grew up with the reality of life and settlements deemed illegal by the international community. Living on the front line of Israel's settlement policy is a dangerous business. Ah, sometimes stone, but uh, not, uh, not too much danger. Everything is uh, bulletproof. Everybody here in Kiryat Arba is armed. A teenage girl has just been murdered by a Palestinian from nearby. But the cookies seem willing to brave the risks in order to live here. All the place is full of terrorists. No, 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 no place is safe anymore. But life goes on. Like all women in the settlement, Zamira spends Friday shopping for the Shabbat meal. They're really nice people. We love them here. We help each other. We know that we can count on them in the community. In Jerusalem, it's Yosef's day off. He and a friend join Jews from around the world at the Western Wall. 
It's nice that we can come here today. It's been a long time. Here is the symbol of why the cookie crossed continents to start a new life. Our parents are very shy. They scare about it. What people might think. Yeah. What people think about them. All the them. time they think about uh, what other people right. might think about us. Kind of insecure about themselves. We don't, we don't feel different. Even though we look different, we don't feel different. A little bit. We grow up here. Exactly. I don't regret leaving the place. I mean, I love my country. I love India. I will never forget where I came from. But no, I don't want to go back there to leave as a Jew. In a few hours, the great siren will sound over Jerusalem, ushering in a day of prayers and rest. But for now, it's playtime for the city's multi-ethnic Jewish youth. Back in Kirat Arba, it's time for the Shabbat meal, Indian style. <laughs> we like it, but we can't neglect the traditional food. Food from home is something which we can't forget. What do you mean by home? Nothing can replace. When I talk to Israeli people in Hebrew, I make the translation two times, once in English, once in my language, but I dream in Ivrit. <laughs> Indeed, the first generation of Far Eastern Jews to arrive in Israel find themselves torn between tradition and modernity, between past and present. On our way to Jerusalem, you know that I was entering a holy land. And when I saw all these beautiful girls, all yeah. in shorts, so I said, oh, this is actually still, you know, earth. Earth. And not we heaven. Not in heaven. <laughs> not in heaven. She woke up suddenly. I woke up. In India, we have, you know, mm -hmm. respect for our parents and our elders. Mm -hmm. Leave alone, you know, our parents. We don't respect elders. I want to talk about manners. I can do better. Uh, but sure. the problem with us parents is that it's not good enough. <laughs> the cookies say they were driven out of Israel by the Assyrians 27 centuries ago. For 7,000 of them, the long wandering has ended. Many others will follow to settle in the Promised Land. That was a report by Cyril Payan, and we're joined now from Jerusalem by Cyril. Cyril, can you give us a further sense of the history of the cookie people how they ended up in this part of South Asia and Southeast Asia, uh, and uh, what, what the reasons behind that exile were, just the history of the cookie, if you like. Well, the cookies are part of uh, a few tribes living on these uh, borders areas of Bangladesh, India, and Burma, as you said, and they are known uh, by the biblical name of the Bnei Menashe. So what they what they have been claiming for for decades now is that they are members of uh, 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 one of the tenth love tribe of Israel who have been uh, sent away uh, by the Assyrians 20, 70, 27 centuries ago, uh, as they as they claim. So it's all started by chance because um, the Jewish uh, issue is not very renowned in Southeast Asia and in Asia in general. And I was in uh, Rangoon, the former capital of, of Burma, and I've just discovered a synagogue, a Jewish synagogue, and just uh, happened to understand that there were uh, hundreds of uh, Jewish living in Burma and in, in the former uh, in, 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 uh, British Empire uh, decades ago. And some have been relocated uh, through the years, through centuries, and it was uh, to the point of uh, flying in these remote places of uh, Manipur. Mizoram, extremely uh, uh, far away in the, the west of Bengal in India to find this uh, cookie uh, who are just one will, one wish is to go back to their promised land. So Cyril, 27 centuries is a very long time. To what extent is this sense of attachment to Israel ancient and to what extent has it been perhaps reignited more recently uh, by the Israeli authorities? 
Well, um, there are some uh, there are some trips now uh, organized and sponsored by the uh, by the Israeli government. It started uh, uh, two decades ago, and seven thousand of these communities have been already resettled. They did their, what we call the Aliyah uh, back to Israel. But we're talking about uh, thousands, maybe a tenth of thousand of them of families just waiting to go back to the the promised land. So there is a a, a quiet uh, exception of uh, this uh, trip to Israel and. Seven 7,000 are living in mostly in settlements in uh, in Israel, and uh, they are extremely good fighters. They are tibeto birman of ascendance, and then 200 of them have been uh, joining Tzahal, the Israeli army, the sniper force, the special forces. So in this sense, they are very well integrated. But I can tell you, uh, uh, many many of them are still waiting uh, for for doing this uh, this very important trip back to the Promised Land. And just very quickly, Cyril, can you give us a sense of the similarities to other returned? Uh, Jewish population, say, from Ethiopia? Is it exactly the same situation, the same rights? Maybe for the second generation, the, for the young uh, cookies, the young Benashe, they are very well integrated. But are, of course, they are going from other culture, very far away, and not are not really mainstream uh, Jewish uh, Ju Ju Jewish uh, people coming to Israel. So maybe the first generation was a bit harsh, a bit difficult, but now they are fully, in the second generation, fully integrated here in the society. All right, Cyril Payan from Jerusalem, thanks very much for that. And that brings us to the end of this edition of Reporters. Stay tuned, more news coming up shortly.